Welcome to my program, Bashir's Corner. We invite guests from all sections of the Danish society. We discuss with them cultures, politics, inter-ethnic, interfaith, living, and every other topic which we think is necessary in the society. And many times ta we take issues which mainstream media doesn't want or cannot approach those issues. And for example, today's program, I, am, I have invited uh, Jill. And Jin, your name is Jin Wilsko, full name, if I have. And we are going to discuss uh, adoption, adoptees, human trafficking, and all the issues related to people, both in Danish society and on internationally. So welcome to my studio. Thank you for having me. I wanted to ask you, you uh, were adopted from Korea, right? Yes. And we know that uh, there are also many other children uh, adopted from Korea. Why Korea specifically in Denmark? Um, Korea set up a, an inter-country adoption system okay. after the Korean War in uh -huh. the 50s and 60s. Okay. And it was uh, pretty soon very efficient. So uh, Korea uh, quickly got a, a reputation for uh, supply, steady supply of healthy children. And was it so easy to adopt from there? It was very easy. Uh -huh. uh, from South Korea, over 200,000 mm. have been adopted abroad. That's a lot of numbers. Mm. That's a lot of numbers. It's a mm. big, yeah. So what is the uh, population of uh, adoptees from South Korea to Denmark? Oh, it's around estimated 8,000. 8,000? 8, 8,000 children, as okay. I, I know. Maybe more. Mm -hmm. I don't have the exact numbers. So. Besides uh, Korean, which other countries uh, Danes uh, love to adopt children? Yeah, it's, lot, it's mostly from the non-Western country okay. to the Western country. Why so? The adoption system is started up as a charity program to save the orphanages. Uh, good intentions. Well, <laughs> good intentions. Good intentions. Okay. So it was most uh, from... But it, it turned out that the, there weren't that many uh, orphans that they actually have children. Mm -hmm. So today it's starting to change, so it's to, uh, to, um, uh, the, to take care of the need for parenthood in ah, the Western country. Okay. So what about, uh, they also adopt children from Bangladesh, India, which kind of countries you know? Yeah, there's a lot of countries started from, the, from Asia actually, okay. and uh -huh. then it moved to South America, ah. and then now from Africa. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's in Asia, it's st still uh, adopting from China and ah. South Korea, and the Bangladesh, Bangladesh, India, India huh? and uh, from right from Africa, mm. uh, we have now from Ethiopia, okay. which we have huge problems. The last scandal uh, huh? of adoption yeah. is from e Ethiopia. Yeah, we'll Denmark. talk about that later. Okay. But then, um, how it is to be an adoptee in Denmark for you, especially? For me, especially. Um, how it is is a big question, but uh, You're there's to a lot of as you want. yeah. There's a lot of challenges. I'm trying to uh, get the critical questions out there, and okay. it's very difficult to get the answers. Uh -huh. So um, in that point, it's difficult to be an adoptee with critical answers to the systems. Uh, but system. about, uh, how about emotional relationship? Um, if emotional, it can be difficult for people to understand the, how it is to be an, an trans, transnational, transracial adoptee mm. in mm. Denmark. Mm -hmm. So um, it can be difficult when I try to explain to it people. to people and get them to understand. So okay. in that point it's difficult, in other points I'm just a, okay. a, a woman in Denmark. No, of course. Yeah. Uh, but um, I mean, you are Danish. Uh, you speak Danish. I mean, of course, <laughs> your your adopted uh, uh, your parents are Danish. But when you walk in the street, uh, do people accept you as a Dane? No, no. Uh, my looks is like an Asian woman, and mm. uh, I admit like that. And I meet a lot of prejudice and a lot okay. of uh, microaggression in 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 the racism. If uh -huh. that's what we talk about. Okay. Yeah. So if I ask you. What is the adoption system? How does adoption takes place usually? 
Yeah, it's, if it's, there's two kinds of adoptions. There's inter-country adoptions and All there right. are national adoptions. Yes. I mostly talk about the inter-country adoptions. That's the same system I was adopted yes. from. And it, actually, legally, there are two adoptions taking place. One in the, some call it giver country, I call it export countries. Okay. And uh, there's another legal adoption in the import country, Denmark. So adoption takes place like there's uh, an agency, both mm. places, who has a partnership. Okay. And uh, in the export country, that's where they find the adoptable children. And, and how they, do they do that? And yeah, that's your Hubron. Where do, does the children come from? Mm. Uh, and uh, we found out that they o often they come from orphanages. And how do the children get in the orphanages? They're often like black boxes. Nobody really know where the children come from. And uh, it turned out that a lot of the children are not orphanage, are not orphans. They're, they're from they have families. they have living known par parents and families and okay. extended families, and many of them are poor, mm. poor and stigmatized. Okay. So many put their children for a short term period in the orphanage because of uh, they are searching for work or they are sick, mm. and they they come and visit your children and want to take. The, the children back when they are able to, and then the children are gone, so through inter-country adoptions. Sometimes the parents are coerced mm. to uh, give their children up for adoption without knowing what the consequences, the fully consequences of adoption. Because they're poor and because they're lied to, ah. and they are told that the children are going abroad for education. So, so they, they think the children are going back and the family bond are still there. Ah, so okay. they know, never realize that no. what an inter-country adoption is. So what is. happened to you actually? I'm interested, you know, that you are adopted. I'm adopted. Did you try to find out who are your parents, mm, yeah, your biological my, parents? My paper, my journal, my file is like a lot of other adoptees and also from South Korean. And, uh, and on what is that? And on that journal, my adoption journal stands, I'm an... I'm an orphan, I'm found. And often we found out they, they're so-called paper orphans. We make orphans on paper to make us adoptable through the, through the inter-country adoption system. But isn't it a crime that then you have your parent and they make you into an orphan? Yes, it is a crime, but it's very hard to get any investigation or help to oh. uh, pers pursue this. So uh, the industry and the need for children are very strong. And the industry, it's huge, it's global. Mm. Some of the agencies, the, the one I'm adopted through called HOLD, mm. work in over 70 countries around the world. So it's a huge industry. Uh, a lot of money involved? A lot of money, a lot of power involved. Okay. Yeah. So who makes the money? Who makes the money? Oh, it's The parents or the agencies? Uh, no, sometimes the parents are offered something, bribes or a small yeah. amount of money, but the big, the big money are disguised as adoption fees, mm. and it costs up to a quarter million Danish kroner to adopt a, a child from South Korea to Denmark. And where do they pay that money? To the agencies? To the agencies, and they call it adoption fees, and they call it to Half refund... quarter million? Yeah, it's, they say it's to refund the expenses they have for lawyers, and but yeah, it's a huge industry and it mm. can cost that lot of money. and. We, you were also talking, uh, Jean, that there is another kind of adoption that is in national adoption. Yeah. And uh, what is that? That is uh, called the Danish Danish adoption and ah. an inside Danish from Danish citizens to another Danish citizen. Okay. Yeah. So it means that if a, pair, if a pair cannot have children, then they can ask uh, or adopt children. Oh, from they can people. ask. It's like a private. You have to get uh, the the authority municipalities to say, who, yes. to say yes and to approve the adoptive parents. So, but it's not many uh, children in Denmark. It's not that many national adoptions, but okay. we are having a new. Uh, uh, there's a new uh, no. adoption Danish adoption law uh, coming, and they are in there they're making forced adoption much easier. So we will see more adoptions in, in Denmark in the future. Okay. Um, you talked about a different type of adoption. Um, so what is open adoption? Can you please tell us? Yeah, it, it's been discussed a lot now uh, okay. in these days. Yes. And in the media, I read that too. In yeah. the media. And legally, there's no such things as open adoption. Adoption is uh, 
uh, uh, forever and 100% cut from the family to make new family ties. But what is open adoption if it was done properly? Yeah, we talk about it and it can be everything from follow-up reports about uh, letters to regularly physical contact. With the, with the original parents? With the original parents and families. So it's can difficult. That, and it's not, it's not um, regulated. No. So it's just something we talk about right now. And we have to ask ourselves if children with parents are adoptable mm. at all. Mm. So uh, we have to go back and, and take a question. So what I think is for the adoptees who already been adopted mm. and open adoption is better to have contact and to know your data yes. and your family. But in the in the intercountry adoption system, we should not allow uh, should not allow uh, adoption from children with families. Why so? It uh, it should be there's a lot of things, but internet intercountry adoption should be the very last resort at, mm. at all. And we need to respect the bond between a child and a family. Mm. It's a fundamental right according to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, where the children have a right to be taken care of as much as possible uh, by its own parents. Mm. So. How many, uh, now we're coming back to Denmark, now how many uh, Danish uh, uh, agencies are involved that? Are there many, are they small, are they big? Uh, and do you trust them? Yeah, th there are two agencies, uh, there were two agencies okay. in Denmark called Danadopt and AC Okay. And they just, uh, uh, that's under this new adoption law. And because of the scandals from Ethiopia two years ago, yeah. they make uh, the minister, so minister of social affairs started up an investigation and about the whole system, mm. and they ended up. It took a twist and ended up. So they're going to consolidate the agency. So they fu they, uh, they fusionized, merged them. they merged them. Ah. So now they are consolidated in one big agency it just happened like one or two months ago. But is it a private agency or is it a government uh, control uh, agency? It's a, a cr accredited, accredited. Yeah. Uh, so it's under, it's a private organization, non, yeah. Uh, uh, NGO. NGO, but it's under the supervision, supervision of ah. the, the Anke do you trust them? Because you work a lot with the adoptees, you know. Um, to be I, I honest. must say no. I don't trust them. Uh, all Why? the former, uh, all the years they've been there, they've been scandal by scandal, and mm. they t didn't take care of that. Okay. And uh, they don't support the adoptees. Their main purpose is uh, to take care of the customers who are the the parents on the waiting list okay. who wants to be parents. And um, there's been scandal after scandal, and they didn't take care of it. And they are systemized. They know about the systemized uh, violation of the Children's Convention of the Right of the Child, the CRC. So they, they know how to move? They know how to move. And they are also in uh, umbrella organizations ah, and okay. Eurodopt. And so it's a global. Mm. I understand that you work with a lot of uh, agencies, uh, sorry, and NGOs which are very critical of uh, the whole uh, adoption system. Um, and I have talked with you and you personally uh, are also quite critical, uh, you yeah. know, and rightly so. So if I ask you to just outline what are your main objections to this system? Um, two main objections. The yes. first is the violation of the Convention of the Right of the Child. The fundamental children try to be taken care of by its family, to keep their identity and culture and, culture and language and yeah. so on. And the next, who's in line with this, is all the money. Mm. This is a huge trade, legalized trade in children, where children go one way and the money goes the other way. So Who loses in that? What? Who loses in that system? Yeah, it's the first families and the children. And the winners are the agencies and the uh, adults who need parenthood. But Jean, Denmark is supposed to be a democratic society, a very organized society. Very little crimes happen here. And there are government agencies who keep an eye on this kind of thing, you know. And with all that control, still uh, things happen which you say that they're not right? 
yeah, still things happen, and the, the excuse is that Denmark have no influence what happens in the export countries. Ah. And because there's adoption there and adoption here legally, they, they only uh, take responsibility for the Danish adoptions mm. and it do, take no regard in how, how did, they, did the children come in the system. You used uh, two words which um, hit me, you know. Instead of adoption, you say export of children and import of children. Yeah. But children are not commodity. They are not potatoes to be exported, imported. They shouldn't be, but they are commodity in inter-country adoptions. And uh, there are different horrible. prices and there are uh, lower prices on what called special needs children. Um, and we can see that the adopters society in Denmark, Adoption and Samfund, mm. they fight a lot to get cheaper adoptions. So it's a lot about the money. And also there are illegal adoptions too? Yeah, but what is an illegal adoption? Because is it illegal a, a to, the to the convention yeah. of the right of the child or mm. the national law? And But yeah, it's difficult, and but I will say we we found we found in a lot of adoption paper false death certificates of mm. parents, and that's obviously fraud. But nobody takes care of it, uh, not the authority, not the police, not anybody. So it's very hard to. Uh, when uh, I speak with Danish parents who have adopted children from outside. They say that they want to give a better future to the children, yes. education, love, uh, and bring up them with food and everything, you know. So what is wrong with that? Yeah, I mean, there's some, some adopters can, uh, can take their parenthood, uh, can live up yes. to it. Okay. But even though if you have a really, uh, all these, these things, it's still a problem to be Commodity is still a problem to lose your identity, to mm. lose your family. It goes into a trading system. So even, even if you have a nice growing up in Denmark, it's still a, a problem. So would you like that when the Danish parents adopt a child, that they should make sure that the ch child's original family is in contact and they go and visit, they make sure that uh, the child visits them so that the child becomes too cultural uh, adoptee? Um, it's a very difficult question because it's better than a closed adoption. Mm. But I think children should, should not be removed and removed from his family and his culture. And if we need to use our resources to keep families together. Often it's because, it is because of poverty Mm. or stigmatize a single moms mm. and uh, with all the adoption fees, the high adoption fees, we could use the resources much better. And this is also a migration issue. Mm. Why, why, ad why only take children, why not families? So let's try to use our resources to keep the families together. together. And it's shown that it is a myth that there are these orphans thrown in streets and garbages around the world. It's not true. It's, it turned out that poor people love their children as well. Of course, of yeah. course, of course. So we talked about in the beginning and you said uh, there is discrimination against adoptees in, in, in Denmark. Uh, are they not treated like Danes? Is there racism against them? I, I can say maybe we're a little bit between. Okay. We have uh, more credit because we are grown up in white families. Mm. We talk Danish. We yeah. have all the traditions, but often we are protected by when we are together with our white adopted families. But when we are on our own, we are treated like everybody else with a non-white Danish look. Okay. Uh, then how do you see the future of adoption in Denmark? Yeah, um, I see the future as we will have more adoptions, forced adoption, and they will try to make it easier to, with inter-country adoption, and they put a lot of millions in this. But we are an adoptee community, mm. which are growing globally and here in Denmark. And we are trying to get influence on the system and we are trying to get our voice heard. Are you campaigning against that? Against, uh, are you campaigning against adoptions? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not against adoptions, but I'm, 
Actually, adoption are regulated in mm. the, the Convention of the Right of the Child, where it's supposed to be the very last resort. resort. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm fighting for. And so if you have to, with all your experience and your heart at the right place, if you have to give an advice to da Danish parents who are watching this program, looking into their eyes, what would you say? I would say, don't be naive, try to investigate, uh, uh, inform yourself about the system, uh, about where the money goes to, where the children come from, and most of all, listen to the adoptee's mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important, and it sounds very easy, but uh, it's not what's happening right now. It's the adopted who set the line for the inter-country adoption system and how to treat adoptees. Mm. And I would really encourage everybody to listen to the adoptees. There's a lot of voices, communities and groups out there. So. Uh, now I want to come uh, in the end of the program on a specific issue that is human trafficking. Yes. Uh, over and above the adoptee children. When you go to Easter Gade or you go to other places, you see a lot of colored uh, women from Africa, from other places standing there as prostitutes and in other uh, European countries they are also. So, uh, what is your opinion about that? How should we deal with this? Yeah, uh, human trafficking is a huge issue and it's growing. I think it's about time we deal with it. There's a lot of ways, but mm. I think uh, most of all we have to look about the, the Western country and not Western country and how we look at it and the power structure and all that. Okay. I think... Uh, you talk like a politician. <laughs> I do. Oh no. Oh it's no. All right, it's all right. <laughs> um, but I think we have to change the society looks at people and it's also connected to the racism mm. issue how we look at other people. Mm. So it's... Uh, in in every level we have to take care of this human trafficking which is growing and the children is a huge commodity for prostitution, for adoption, for labor and we have to take care of this in a democratic society. society. Mm. I saw a program the other day on CNN where they talked about China and how children are snatched you know from supermarkets, from malls uh, from the parents and sold on internet. Do you do, are you aware of that? Yeah, I'm very aware of that. And Denmark still uh, adopt children from, from China. China, and it's a huge problem. Uh, uh, and 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 there's at least long waiting list where it take years. So people should know that there are not that many children. Mm. It's a myth that there are all these children, or else they wouldn't be on the waiting list for so many years. Okay. And we can see in China that there is a need of children. And the one-child policy made it even worse. Of course. And there is this, and the Convention on the Right of the Child, there is a subsidiarity principle, mm. where children should be taken care of in their own country. Uh, first, national adoption, foster care, institutional care. Uh, so we before inter-country adoption. Okay. And we can see with all these need for children in China, I can't, I don't understand why there's still need for inter-country adoption. Mm which should be the very last resort. But it is because of the money and the agencies. But is a crime committed against children, against families, and then being sold? And the people who buy, they are also committing a crime, isn't it? Yes. In my, in my opinion, it is a crime, but yeah. nobody is investigating, nobody is... Why so? Why nobody is investigating? Is there uh, money involved, or is it the government don't care? It, it, it's all kind of reasons, but mostly it's huge scandal. If you mm. could start to look into this, system, I, th I think it's called the world's uh, biggest uh, experiment in family uh, inter-country adoption and it's never been reviewed, it's never been, yeah, what do we call it, evaluated. 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 Uh -huh. So um, many people say it's the world's largest social experiment. Actually, Denmark once uh, adopted children from Greenland, and it went oh, very yeah. r wrong, and Greenland closed inter-country adoption also to Denmark. Mm -hmm. So you mean the other countries should do the same? There's been a lot of countries who closed down because of scandals. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving those uh, information. I'm shocked, you know. <laughs> uh, and I hope that our viewers who have listened to, to Jean talking about the evils of this kind of adoption Adoption is okay, but it should be the lost resort, right? Yes. Thank you very much, Jean. It was a pleasure Thank meeting you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.